Hey everyone, I've been getting some questions on how I run my virtual reality for flying without using the Oculus Link cable or the Air Link feature. And I have an Oculus Quest 2. So I thought I'd do a quick video for those people that aren't familiar with this other option. You can see I do not have either Link or Air Link running under my quick settings. I use this program here, it's called Virtual Desktop. You can purchase this in the store. Come on. And I think it was $19 or $20. Now it has a lot of features that you can take advantage of above and beyond Flight Simulator, but that was what I purchased it for. And for $20, believe me, it, it's well worth it in my opinion compared to the results I was getting with the Link Cable and the Ear Link feature. And it's quick, it's faster, it's more stable. It, it's just all around better in my estimation. So we're going to launch it and you're gonna see how quickly I get onto my laptop. And that's that, so now I'm on my laptop. Now I can use my mouse. So this, I could use the controllers, but I don't like using them. Um, you can use them for different features up here, like changing the size changing the curvature of the screen but I just leave it as it is so this virtual desktop streamer this is the app that you need to get a hold of it's a very small utility that runs in the background and you can see I have it running down here very few settings on it you sign in with your oculus username I don't mess with any of the options because I don't need to the video tells you can list folders where you have your videos in case you want to watch them through the app. So it's a good little utility and it's necessary for this. So now at this point, because I have my headset on, I don't have to launch Steam VR. I don't have to set anything up. I don't have to launch my Oculus Quest. All I have to do is launch either DCS or Microsoft. And because my headset's already on, Everything else will just happen automatically. You'll see in a second, Steam VR is going to pop up and we're going to be in the Steam environment. And the nice thing is if I take off my headset, put it down, put it in standby, and come back, I'm still connected. I'm still on my desktop. Everything is still right there. So from here, what I like to do is bring this menu up and go back to my desktop just to make sure that there's nothing in the way of my program which now I can get to by just using my controller and clicking outside of the window. And that's it. I am in the game that quick, that simple, and that fast. And from here, just go ahead and launch the game. And I won't make you sit through this. It does stutter and shake while it's loading. And like that, we're in. Is my wingman. We're going to go ahead and launch. I'm going to go first.
So just to be fair, I'm going to show you with Microsoft Flight Simulator that the process is almost the same and, and just as quick and easy. Right now, the only thing running on my laptop, which you'll see in a second, is Microsoft Flight Sim itself, because I don't want you to make, have to sit through the loading, which if you play it, you know what I mean. And also the desktop streamer app that's needed, the small utility. That's all that's running. So we're going to start. We're going to just no explanation. I'm just going to go through the steps and you'll see how quick and easy everything is. Okay, that, now that took a little bit longer for some reason. That's the first time that's actually ever done that. And I'm, it may just be because I need to restart my laptop. But you can see, I have Flight Sim running, again, because I didn't want to have to make somebody sit through what it takes to load. And down here, I have the virtual desktop streamer. Nothing else running on my computer. But just to get into VR from this point, Without having anything loaded, no flights, all I did was start it and let it load to this home menu. All I have to do, I just come up here to Steam VR because my headset's already on and active. Through the desktop, the virtual desktop, you'll see it's literally seconds before I'm in the Steam VR <laughs> atmosphere, which I'm going to center. And then I can go here to my desktop. And now at this point, I can just go in on Flight Sim and do the I'm just moving it, putting something there, control tab on the keyboard to get into VR mode in the sim. Let's give the sim focus hit and it's in VR mode, but when I hit control tab and then all I got to do is use my controller to click past it because you can see it. See it back there? Hiding behind there. So we just click there. Now we're in VR and I hit my space key. The devices, I don't use the Oculus Touch controllers. So I just hit default on this. If you want to use it, you can go ahead and customize them to your heart's content. And so this is not actually zeroed with my stick i wasn't in position so let me hit the space bar again oh that's all you gotta do to zero it yeah that's it just hit the space bar hit it too many times and you do get that <laughs> you can't because it is a shortcut for, for loading and flights but you can see that's it i am in it is uh i don't want i know it's nighttime up there in massachusetts right now but i don't want to really do a nighttime flight around cape cod uh, boy, talk about feeling alone, huh? <laughs> yeah. This is a, a, a loading construct. That's where we're at. And there you go. I am in VR. My mouse is working, so we can go ahead. Yeah. And again, like I mentioned before, for some reason, it always mutes it. So you just have to unmute, and you're good to go. Especially if you take off the parking brake. <laughs> now I don't have, normally I would have uh, the NIS scaler tool running, which gives you a better graphic quality and no real loss of frame rates. But I am just doing this to show you the example of the virtual desktop and how easy it is to use it. And uh, this is Odyssey National Guard Base, Cape Cod, Massachusetts. I used to live on Cape Cod a long time and they actually have a friend that was stationed on here and spent time on this base. There was at one time a World War II prisoner of war camp that was actually here on this base, Air National Guard base in Falmouth, Massachusetts, Cape Cod, and there was a prisoner of war camp here, and my friend and I found it once and went there with our metal detectors and 
found some pretty interesting things. One of them, believe it or not, and I kid you not on this, was a penny with a bullet hole through the center. And uh, we found that with a metal detector. So he had horses that were actually kept on the base. So in uh, the golf course, I used to spend time there. We got Hyannis is down that way. And the canals, which lead you to the mainland, are over there. Martha's Vineyard out that way somewhere. Anyhow, that's virtual desktop. That's how I use it. It's good, it's quick, it's fast. Again, my frame rates, my graphics are always, always better than when I'm using the link cable. I haven't used that now in months. Or Earlink. I, I just, I use virtual desktop. It allows me to have great frame rates, great quality graphics. And I really hope this helps you. All right. Thanks for watching.